Okay, welcome back. I wanted to talk today about everything that you need to do in order to get your first development job. Now, this advice is going to be mostly targeted at people who have just completed a coding bootcamp because that's my background and that's a background that I feel I understand really well. But I think this could equally apply to people who are finishing up a bachelor's in computer science or are self-taught because the point is uh, when you don't have experience, there are certain challenges that come along with that. And I remember that time well, I feel like I have a heart for people that are in that situation. And so I wanted to share some things that I've seen based on my own experience and also based on my experience from reviewing a lot of applications for entry-level developer positions, which were often being applied for by people who had just finished boot camps. And so I feel like I have a sense for what works and what doesn't, and I just wanted to share that with you in hopes that it would help you. Okay, so we're gonna talk about four things. We're gonna talk about learning, projects and portfolios, actually applying and how to do that, and networking. So let's get into it. Okay, learning is a really interesting one. I know it was for me because my coding bootcamp experience was extremely difficult. Even now, I, just looking back on it, it was one of the most stressful times of my life. I had taken out a loan to do this program. I didn't feel like I could fall back on any of my prior skills and I struggled. It was difficult. I felt like I was constantly banging my head against the wall and honestly that hasn't fully gone away. I don't think it ever does. It's just kind of part of doing development. But I remember this really, really well and I kind of felt like at the end of boot camp, after it had been so difficult that I had kind of made it, that I had done all this hard work and now I deserved a job. And the reality is that it's not quite like that. The thing is, even after a boot camp, even if it's a really, really good boot camp, there's still a lot that you have left to learn. And you may be ready for an entry level position, but you're gonna have to do some learning on the job most likely. I think boot camps are excellent and do really well for the most part, but you don't know what you don't know. And also there are things that just come from doing development as a job that are hard to replicate on your own or in a boot camp environment. So the point is that you don't wanna rest on your laurels after you've graduated from a boot camp. You want to continue to learn. So my advice would be continue to learn things. So build projects, pick up a new language, pick up a new part of the stack, check out the backend, check out DevOps, depending on what your background is. Try and figure out how to build something that you wanna build, automate something in your life. These are all great things you could do. Don't just apply and do nothing else. And it is challenging, I'll admit that, to feel like you need to apply full time, but also be learning, but it's worth it. I think you've gotta keep your skills sharp, and if you graduate boot camp and then immediately go to doing zero development on a day-to-day -day basis, your skills will atrophy, so it's really, really important to try and keep your skills sharp right after you've graduated and as you're applying. I have another video about how to come up with coding portfolio project ideas that I think would be helpful, so I will link that below, and you can check that out for ideas as to what to build, because that is a question that everybody typically has. Speaking of projects, that is our next section. So I wanted to talk about projects and portfolio. Let's start with portfolio. So portfolio is a big deal, but it's not the hugest deal, I think. So at the bare minimum, you want a homepage that has a bio so I can find out a little bit about you that maybe tells a little bit about why you decided to get into development and also show some projects. So I have a lot of thoughts about kind of the whole personal brand and also project thing. So I think ideally in the long, long term, you want your personal website to be kind of your home on the internet or your digital garden as people call it now. You want it to be a place where you can write, where you can really build your brand, where you can put all your projects, where you can try stuff out, where you can maybe practice some SEO. I think that's a kind of a long-term vision for a personal site. It's what I'm trying to do with my personal site. I'm not all the way there yet. But I think a personal site at the beginning is also something that you could spend a lot of time on and maybe not get the most value back out of it. So I think the temptation might be to build everything from scratch. You don't have to do that. It could easily be a Squarespace site. It could be a templated site. It could be a Wix site. It could be a Webflow site. It doesn't necessarily have to be something you hand roll. You do want it to look pretty, but there are plenty of perfect free templates out there that would do perfectly well for you. So I would just say, pick one of those up. You want things to look good. You want to put time into this, but you don't want to get stuck just really getting into the tech, even though that's fun and I like doing that. 
you want to get this basically to a certain threshold where it's good enough and then kind of leave it alone. And this is specifically for people who are applying for their first job. Now, later on, you can do more fancy stuff and build out your personal brand. But the point at the beginning is that you just want things to kind of be located in one place and make it easy on your interviewers. If you can set up a blog right out of the gate on your personal site, I would recommend doing that and start writing. Write about your job search, write about what you're learning. I really, really wish that I still had uh, blog posts to look back on. I do have some on Medium, but I wish I kind of had everything gathered into one place I, it's important to own your own content so I would not recommend writing on a medium or anything like that but try to blog try to start writing as soon as you possibly can as long as it's not going to take too much effort away from applying this brings up another point which is kind of under this broader umbrella of learn in public or build in public so you just want to be really open about what it is you're learning you want to write and share your knowledge in hopes of helping others and that is a really really good and straightforward I think way of building a personal brand which is important and will help get jobs in the future and all kinds of other great opportunities okay let's talk about projects I have kind of strong feelings about projects so like I said boot camps are great I went to a boot camp I think they're awesome but one downside is that the curriculum is the same for everybody and so a lot of times people will end up having a lot of the same projects if not all of the same projects and that's great up until you start applying and then when you go and put your portfolio together you basically end up having the same projects as everybody else and it's really hard to differentiate yourself i got to the point in my last job where i could tell just by two or three projects on someone's portfolio which boot camp they went to and that is not a place you want to be in you want to stand out and the good thing is this is not easy but you have a good opportunity to do so because everybody Everybody tends to put the same projects on their portfolio you can do something different and really stand out so watch my video about project ideas but a quick recap here is you want to automate things you want to solve your own problems and you want to build stuff that you want to exist in the world and if you do any of those three you're going to stand out you're going to come up with stuff that is different and it's going to be a huge help to you so I would recommend that on a more practical level make sure that the links to the github repos and to the live sites are not broken and make sure that you're picking projects that are easy for people to test. So if you're picking a full stack app where I have to go and create an account, that's not quite as straightforward and easy for me as something that I can just click on and see how it works. So I would say maybe pick one full stack app, but for the rest, pick stuff that's really straightforward and easy to use. Okay, that's projects and portfolios. Let's talk about actually applying. So I'm gonna tell a little story and this is about what not to do. So when I applied for my first developer job, I literally just applied everywhere. I applied to probably 10 or 12 different cities in the south of the US, which is where I live. I applied for public jobs, private jobs, agency jobs, product jobs, startup jobs. It kind of didn't matter if I thought I was even like a little bit qualified, I was applying for it. And on first glance, I think that probably sounds like a reasonable thing. It's a numbers game and you want to increase your numbers, kind to think of it like a funnel where you are applying for a lot of jobs and then it kind of is getting narrower as you go but the downside with that is that you end up being less intentional and it becomes hard to keep things straight and you know when you get spammed like if you've ever been spammed by recruiters or people trying to sell something it's obvious when people haven't put the time in and so i'm going to advocate an approach that is essentially the complete opposite of that which is to decide where you want to live ideally i think there's a lot of remote these days so hopefully that's not quite as big a question but if you do have to be in the office then pick like two or three cities max figure out what the companies are that you're interested in in those cities and figure out who the decision makers are so this is fairly straightforward to do on LinkedIn I think and there are great tools to figure out people's email addresses like hunter.io which shows you a schema of the way that emails work at certain companies so whether it's first.last or first or first initial last name whatever it may be you can use hunter.io and you can email people and so I would advocate once you have your short list of companies and pick them based on whatever you want right like you can pick them based on the product based on the culture based on certain perks based on things that you would learn pick them based on whatever is important to you and then make your short list I think keyvalues.io is going to be really really helpful for you in this regard assuming that the companies you're interested in are listed on key values but key values is basically a culture search database for companies so you can figure out how to align with companies that have the same values as you do. So use key values, make your short list, 
and then start applying, but don't apply the normal way because everyone tries to go in the front door, right? So you don't wanna go in with everyone else, you wanna stand out, which is kind of the whole point here. It's the point with the projects as well, right? Don't do the same thing that everyone else does. So you want to reach out to the decision maker. So that's going to usually be a VP of engineering or a director of engineering or an engineering manager. Whoever it is, try to do your best and figure out who the decision maker is for the job that you're applying for and say, hey, so-and-so just wanted to reach out. I'm such and such and I just graduated from this boot camp. I switched into development from whatever the field was and I decided to become a software engineer because of XYZ and your company really stands out to me for these reasons and I think we'd be a great fit. I wanted to go ahead and just reach out before I applied and see if I could maybe follow up with you after I apply and see if we could get to know each other a little bit. Something like that where you're basically just saying, hey, is it okay if I follow up with you after I apply? I would love to have a conversation. That's kind of the basic idea. And this is going to stand out in a huge way. And given that you have a short list, you'll be able to do more research on the companies, be better informed, and you're gonna write better cold emails or cold LinkedIn messages in order to get these phone calls. So this is kind of the basic idea and you'll go from there. Hopefully a few of them will land and you'll be able to go through the interview process, but you really wanna emphasize what is special about you. What in your background can you use in this job? What are you bringing to the table? Not just your engineering skills, but maybe soft skills that you learned in another field or a set of skills that complements your development skills really well. Emphasize those things, but don't just go through the front door with everybody else. Try and figure out how to stand out and how to get to the decision makers. So that's how I would approach applying for jobs. And last, we're gonna talk about networking. So I would recommend right off the bat, get a mentor. So there are websites where you can do this. Mentor crews, you could hire somebody off of Fiverr. You could go a lot of different places. You could go to a local meetup and try and meet people. That's meetup.com. So any of those are gonna be great. And you want a mentor because someone's gonna be able to tell you what you don't know. Someone's gonna be able to give you specific advice, more specific advice than I can give you right now because I don't know your specific situation, but you want that. And so I would say, first of all, just do what you can to meet people. Maybe find someone that's an older developer in the community that can advise you on your job search and on your learning. And that's gonna be a great thing for you. So find a mentor. Number two, go to meetups, try and meet other people in your local tech community. That's just gonna be a great thing. And I don't like networking for networking's sake. I like trying to be helpful and altruistic, not going in with the lens of just trying to get something. So I think that's important. So start getting involved, uh, start trying to contribute to local projects, start being helpful to people, and over time, your network will grow. Uh, number three, what you wanna do is get on Twitter. Tech is really big on Twitter, so start following people that work in the technologies that you're interested in and start responding to them. Start tweeting what you're learning. That's gonna be a really big deal. And then fourthly, think about public speaking. Public speaking has been absolutely the biggest game changer for my career. Every year I've done public speaking, I've gotten a promotion. It confers authority on you, whether you deserve it or not. And it just does a ton for your confidence, for your growth, for your network. And so those are the four things I would do as far as networking goes. So that's it. That's my advice. That's how to learn, how to apply for jobs, how to build your portfolio and projects and how to network. Let me know if you have questions. Did I miss anything? Are there specific things that you wanna know about that I could talk about? I'm happy to do more videos or just respond directly in the comments. If you're still watching at this point, I think there's a good chance that you're gonna enjoy other stuff I'm putting out. So consider subscribing. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.